I feel like there's this moment in time right now where there's an insurgent voice about design thinking, leanness, adaptiveness, agility, responsiveness, and then there's legacy that is resistant to that for whatever reason. What is the conflict there? Why isn't this mode of thinking the dominant mode of thinking right now? What's holding us back? Efficiency. I mean, it is interesting. The New York Times was titling a few, few years ago, Six Sigma is over, it's time for design thinking. I gave a speech at an, an innovation comp a conference about the difference between Six Sigma and design thinking. I mean, those are the two, I think, extreme of the past 10 years of business. Six Sigma is all about you know, reduction of any redundancy, any inefficiency. And then you have design thinking that by definition is inefficient mm -hmm. <laughs> because you, in, you insert risk and emotion and, and intuition, intuition is the key word, inside the system that, that, that is fighting for efficiency. And this is really the, where the contrast arrives. And then there is the risk implication, how much you are willing to risk. And, and the bigger is the risk, the more is 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 the is the um, the more difficult it is to to drive design thinking inside the organization. I've been talking to design schools a lot about that. Yeah. Like, are you training people ready to be in the business world and handle the other side of what goes on? And that you can make a beautiful prototype and sketch, but can you sell it? Right. Can you back it? Can you do a business model? Because can you as produce a, it? well, and as a designer, sooner or later you're gonna run into a business person. Sooner or later, you're going to need financing, you're going to need legal, you're going to need all those things, and a designer coming out of school is not prepared for that. That's the biggest frustration that we've heard from young designers when we took over DWR four years ago. They'd say, you know, we can't get our product to market. We can sketch it, we can prototype it, and we would love to bring it in, but you look around here, in order to add another table, we have to take one out. And so we've said, you know, how can we work with them and help them to, to figure out how to commercialize their products just like you're talking about and we're doing something that, that John and I came up with probably over a scotch um, but uh, is to partner a young designer with an established designer and we said well who's the most established designer we work with it's Jens Rism he's 97 years old right. and we're partnering Chris Hardy with him who's a you know, late 20s designer from Atlanta, and what they're doing together is going to be magic. I mean, it's just really incredible. And so Jens has the, the classic touch to the furniture, and Chris is bringing in wire management and what the technology aspects of a new desk might be like, and melding those two together. And that, that's fun to see it, you know, come to be. When you actually face a situation where you need to sell how much design will impact. I'll show with you a little thing I'm just facing. You know all the water enhancers, like Mio and the Sun and everything? Yeah. So if you look at the shelf right now, there's 80 like this, all look the same, rather than stuff. And our company wants to, we're late on that, so we want to issue quickly. And we created a beautiful, really different design that takes all the aspects completely differently, but it's going to take another year, okay? So here's, uh, uh, like w we have a, a little like small crisis, wow. okay, yeah. which we need to sell how much design will differentiate and, and make an impact, okay, versus doing something, go to market on, on something existing like everybody else. And this is for me the moment of truth, you know, when you need to sell how much design really matters. You have to get away from that quarterly, yeah. quarter to quarter, right? Quarter to quarter kills design. Mm -hmm. you quarter, to, right? That thing. Term, like Not only design, most new product, it yeah. kills. Right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, that, that mentality right. kills it. You can budget quarter to quarter, you can budget design, you can budget some failure. Right. But the problem is, uh, designers, when they're trying to be different, I think is a disaster. You don't try to be different. You try to solve an issue. Mm -hmm. We In find that way. we find that designers are out there. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Th these designers, there's so much ego that they forget about the purpose of the job, <laughs> and they're designing for themselves. And they may go to market because that's their dream. And Giulio Caplini may may pick them up, and they're going to sell four pieces in their lifetime, and end up on a on a bread line, right? <laughs> Whereas if they were to listen to somebody and take what they are the talent that they have and solve a problem, and then work with someone to make it so that people could buy it. You actually have a business. So either design is great on its own, there's artists, and the world needs more artists. But in terms of designing a product you're gonna use, that's really, really hard. And you can't aspire to be different, you have to aspire to be useful and to solve a problem. For us, you know, we're very focused on creating a, a space for innovation and design to coexist. So whether it's makers markets or manufacturing space that's adaptable, we have, um, 
MakerBot as a tenant with their manufacturing in Brooklyn, and they're growing very rapidly. And when you talk to their uh, marketing people, they'll talk about holiday 14 as this critical moment for them in terms of, in terms of their product meet, meet, meeting the market. But holiday 13 has you know, 10x what they thought it would do. And so I think as we look at real estate, um, and look at the space and look at design, we look at creating this, this opportunity for innovation to exist and we plan quarter to quarter. And so we say, how do we, how do we set aside a piece? Because we believe that design is at the center of making us more profitable. So in order to do that, we need to create a space for design and creativity to live freely while we are responsible to uh, our investment plan. And so that's the key is you need a portfolio of initiatives. You can't just do right, right, out right, there ideas right, yeah. that may or may not hit. Right. You need a real portfolio strategy around this stuff to, to drive big businesses.